So I just received this in the post about five minutes ago and it should be Ford Racing on the Ford Street Racing on the PlayStation 2. So uh, let's open it up. Fairly decent condition actually. It seems to look worse on the on the photo on eBay. So um, I'm not sure if this is going to be that great or not. I, I do have uh, Ford Racing 3 and I thought that was a great game so um, there should be a decent chance I'll like this one as well. You can see it's got a HMV price on there, 19.99. I only paid, uh, how much did I pay for this? Um, I think it was £3.50 and I think that was including the postage of packing. Um, unfortunately this does have less, this is supposed to have less cars than Ford Racing 3 but again it has some of the old school cars that we had over here in the UK like the uh, the Sierra and the Capri and the Mark 1 Escort and, and whatever so um, that's one of the that's one of the big reasons why I got it and um, this time the game has damage in, uh, in Ford Racing 3 there's no damage in that one So yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, to playing this later, and it's with the manual as well. Let's check out the disc. Again, it's one of those blue ones. It means it's a CD instead of a DVD, and it's um, it's hardly scratched at all. So that's a that's a good sign. Manual's in a pretty decent condition as well. Have a quick look through this. Nothing that interesting, it's just your basic manual. So, yeah, let's take a look at Ford. I nearly said Ford Racing 3 then. So, yeah, let's take a look at Ford Street Racing on the PlayStation 2. So Ford Street Racing, also known as Ford Bold Move Street Racing in the US, came out on the PS2 in 2006, which is two years after Ford Racing 3, yet it feels like a downgrade. The game mainly consists of solo racing and team racing. The championships in solo and team racing are mainly split into classic performance and high performance, so for example, if you choose classic you can only pick from a selection of classic cars to race against other classics and so on. The cars are a mixture of European and American Fords. The European cars are nimble, for example they go round corners well and you can weave in and out easily through the other cars. The American cars feel very wellower. They kind of feel like, to quote Jeremy Clarkson, like you're driving big blamanges. So they're a lot more difficult to get around the corners and this is what can slow you down. The advantage that they have over the European cars though is that they have a lot more power so they can reach some really high speeds which makes up for their not so good corner in the below. Speaking of going round corners, you can actually drift, but I found drifting actually slows me down. I don't know, maybe I'm not doing it properly, but it's a shame as I find the drifting to be quite fun. So you may be wondering why I said this feels like a step down from Ford Racing 3 before. Well for one, there are no replays. I find it so surprising that in a relatively modern racing game there are no replays. You also can't drive in manual and you're forced to drive in automatic. I found these two things to be really disappointing at first. Because I always drive in manual. And plus I was really looking forward to watching replays of some of the cars that I really like. 
I did end up realising though, when I started playing through the team racing championships, that most of the buttons on the controller are used up for team racing. The only buttons that seem to be left over are the circle button, the select button and the left and right buttons on the D-pad. And these buttons just wouldn't be practical for changing gears, so it makes sense that there is no option to drive in manual. There's only 18 cars in the game, and although there are 24 tracks, around 12 are original, and the other 12 are the originals in reverse, and there's also no music while racing. The only extra things this game has over Ford Racing 3 is damage, which is quite limited, and team racing. I'm not sure if team racing is totally unique to this game, or whether it has been done in other racing games, but I think it's really cool. In the Team Racing Championship you have to buy cars with your credits from the showroom to keep in your garage so you can use them for racing. In the Team Racing Championship when your cars get trashed they stay trashed and this affects their performance, although I've never noticed it doing so. In your garage however you can repair your cars which will cost you credits. So, you control a team of two or three cars, you drive one while the others are being driven by the CPU and you can switch between the cars by pressing the down or up buttons on the D-pad and you can give the other cars commands by using the shoulder buttons to make them block other cars so they don't get overtaken or you can give them a draft order. When given a draft order you can either make both the other cars draft each other, you can triple draft where all three of you draft each other or you can double draft where you and another car draft each other. Drafting is a really important feature as you can slingshot each other into first and second place. Now giving orders and finding a strategy felt quite confusing at first, but it doesn't take too long to get to grips with and before you know it you'll be coming up with some pretty good strategies. To get first position in team racing, you don't have to come first, second and third with all three cars. For example, you could finish first and second with two cars, and the other car could finish last. By winning races, you can win credits, and unlock cars for the showroom to buy, and you can unlock tracks and challenges. The challenges vary, from overtaking a certain number of cars within a time limit, to completing a lap within a time limit, for example. Every time you complete a challenge, you win credits. I think this game is quite fun, but I don't think it will be for everyone. On pretty much every review that I've read of this game, it gets absolutely slammed. I think a lot of people are too harsh on this game. I mean, I can see it's not what you'd class as an actual good game, but it is a budget game. It costs £20 brand new, so you have to take that into consideration. You can't expect miracles. So, I wouldn't really recommend this game to anyone, but like I said, personally, I find it to be quite fun. I think if you'd love to play a racing game made up of Ford cars, then, be, then you'd be much better off getting Ford Racing 3, because I think that is a much better game. So, that's Ford Street Racing on the PS2. Thanks for watching.